Okay. Let's discuss this real quick. Now, just bear with me. We're going to do this together. Matthew 27, verse 50. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twine, twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quakes and the rocks rent. So that was one earthquake. Maybe there was an additional one. Hear me out. This is what I'm getting at. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection. So on the third day, not on the day of his death, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Then it goes on to talking about something else. Now, listen to this. Matthew 28, starting in verse 1 and going to verse 2. In the end of the Sabbath, and as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sepulcher. This is the third day. And behold, there was a great earthquake. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set upon it. His countenance was like lightning. Raymond was as white as snow and so forth. Okay, listen. Was there a possibility of there being two massive earthquakes at this time? Jesus causing the first earthquake after his death, immediately after his death. That's when the temple was, the veil was torn. Okay? And then there being another earthquake after the resurrection, which was causing the, the, the bodies of the saints to rise from the grave. Read this and study it for yourself. See what the Holy Spirit reveals to you, but then let's dig into this a little bit deeper, okay? Now we're here in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Now what does it mean by he descended? He that descended at the same time also is he that ascended far above all heavens that he might fulfill all these things. Now what it's saying is, he descended first before he ascended into heaven. So when he died on the cross, he didn't go straight up. He went straight down. Now, not to hell. Somewhere else. Let's go into Luke 16. Now, this is the only mention that I can find of Sheol or Abraham's bosom. But here we are in Luke 16, starting in verse 19. There was a certain rich man clothed in purple fine linen. Every day there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, desiring to be fed of the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sore. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. But the rich man died also and was buried. Hell, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being tormented, and seeth Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received all thy good, and likewise Lazarus received evil, and so forth. So here we're seeing the story of, of, of Abraham's bosom, and the purpose of Abraham's bosom was to take in the saints of old prior to the death of Jesus. Now once Jesus died, however... Abraham's bosom was no longer necessary. Now everyone has an advocate for the Father, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Okay, so now we have salvation through Jesus Christ. We now have that thanks to Jesus. And so now we have an option straight to heaven we go if we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. This is, this is also awesome here. In Acts 1.11, this is the ending. I'm actually going to start in verse 9. So Acts chapter 1, verses 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And, um, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Who were these two men? Were these by chance the two witnesses that will soon appear? I don't know. But... It just says two men. It doesn't say two angels of the Lord. It says two men. I find that interesting, but that's not neither here nor there at this moment. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So Jesus is taken into heaven, and he has to have been taken along with all of these saints according to Matthew chapter 27, that arose out of the graves after his resurrection. So there might have possibly been two earthquakes. One that happened right after the crucifixion of Jesus, right at his death, there was an earthquake that caused the veil to, t to tear from top to bottom and so forth. Then a possible another earthquake 
that happen in the set in the, the other verses that follow Matthew 27 50 through 53 that go into Matthew 28 and 2 okay so when the angel of the Lord descended from heaven there was another earthquake that happened then so that's three days later well we know that while Jesus descended Ephesians 4 9 through 10 he was down there getting the saints together to take them up out of the graves. And if he arose from the graves to minister to the disciples prior to the Holy Spirit showing up, this would give understanding that the saints at this time were also here to speak unto many for those days. It says, um, verse 53, And they came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. It doesn't say how long they were here, but it also doesn't mention that they're still here. So these saints, obviously not still here, had to have gone home with Jesus in the cloud. It says that Jesus was taken in the cloud. So he was carried into the clouds. And Jesus was raptured. I mean, I'm just saying. Okay? I'm just reading the Bible for what it says. Acts 111, read it for yourself. Study it for yourself. But someone read Matthew 27, 50 through 53. Tell me if there were two separate earthquakes that happened here in between those two verses. Matthew 28, 2, then go into Ephesians 4, 9 through 10. Tell me if that correlates with Luke 16, 19 through 31, and, and help me understand it, and if it goes right along with Acts 1, 9 through 11. Just let me know your thoughts. That's all I'm asking for. I love you. Interesting times. We're living in the things that the Holy Spirit reveals if we'll just study His Word and seek His face. Love you guys. God bless. Have a good night.